Your mom, she isn't okay. There will still be other hospital expenses. And you girls will have to figure out something soon. Do you have any relatives? Of course. I'd do anything for you, Claire. Can you tell me where the trial patient files are? When we visited Mom next at the hospital, I was able to slip away and retrieve Mom's file and another patient's who was receiving the drug. That night, Meredith and I used every Photoshop skill we had to make duplicate copies, complete with the hospital's seal and everyone's signatures to ensure that Mom was the patient chosen for the treatment. And the next day, I slipped the files back in. I knew what I'd done was wrong, and I'd broken at least five different laws. But as I walked away, I didn't feel like a criminal at all. I was walking down the hospital corridor with Freddy when Meredith came running towards us. Where have you been? Mom's awake. She's finally awake. Uh -huh. Oh my God, seriously? This better not be a joke, Meredith. I swear on my beautiful face, it's the truth. The doctors are just checking her vitals. Can you girls stop making so much noise? It's a hospital. Oh, shut it, nurse. We're in the coma ward. Who are we disturbing here? Don't you want these people to wake up? How dare you talk to me like that? This is preposterous. That's not even a real word. Remind me to buy you a dictionary. How did you become a nurse? Jeez. We ran down to mom's room to find her fighting off the doctors. She jumped onto her bed like an animal and started screaming at them. Where am I? Are you doing a science experiment on me? You will not touch the daughter of Vladimir. I learned how to catch fish with my bare hands when I was three and tackled a bear when I was five. You think you are any match for me? Ma'am, we mean no harm. We are you doctors? How are you old enough to be a doctor? You have a pimples like a teenager. I'm fully qualified. Shut up, little boy. Tell me where I am before I take your eyeballs out and play bubbles with them. Mom? Mom turned and stared at me with wild eyes. Let's get out of here before she attacks us. For once, I agree with Meredith. Who are you? And what did you just call me? Hey guys, the last time you saw me, I was walking down a hospital corridor after switching the clinical trial files. That was two years ago, so let me get you up to speed on everything that's happened since then. Mom entered the clinical trial, and her tests started showing signs of progress, but she didn't come out of her coma anytime soon. Freddie tried to help us, but Meredith and I had to learn to manage on our own. And it turns out, there's a lot you can steal from a hospital. We never had to buy toilet paper or cleaning supplies again. And we always had endless cups of pudding and jello. Meredith, is that type of cream you're putting on your face? A girl's gotta moisturize. It's very hydrating. My face is as soft as a baby's butt. What did you score today? More useful things, like new bed sheets, pads, towels, and batteries for our TV remote. Time for our show. And more jello. Woohoo! But we still needed money, and after high school, we went back to our conning ways. I always pushed away the guilt and justified it to myself with things like, we needed the money, we had no other choice. But I have to admit, I also felt a thrill every time we outwitted someone and got away with it. It started out small, like hitting venues of concerts and games in different cities and selling fake tickets to desperate fans hoping to get in at the last minute for twice the regular price. By the time they figured the tickets were bogus, we were gone. Or going to the American Idol idol audition venues and convincing hopeful contestants that we were part of the TV show crew and we'd get them through to the next round if they paid us a little money. Then we set up an Instagram matchmaking business account with tons of fake success stories. We were getting booked for our services by loads of women. We'd always meet at the client's house in disguise. What is this exquisite dessert? It's like a cloud melting in my mouth. It's a Japanese cheesecake delivered fresh every day from Japan. You are just the kind of people I like. Ow! Let's get down to business, shall we? Well, I mean, this cake. Yes, yes, business. This is your daughter? Oof. We know she's a bit plain. And she's six feet tall? With that face? Is her case hopeless? Oh no, we've dealt with a lot of uggos before. Believe me. Ow! What my partner means is, there's someone for everyone out there, and we're experts at making those two people meet. 
will need a small advance, and we'll bring you a portfolio of suitable bachelors in a week. You'll be the mother of the bride soon, watching your little giraffe walk down the aisle. Sounds good, right? Make that check to cash, please. Can you also pack the rest of this cake? We'd take the advance, keep in touch for a few weeks, saying we were gathering options, and then disappear. Of course, people soon started commenting on our page, calling us frauds and reporting our account, but we made a good amount while it lasted. We tried out a wedding planner service next. That's a gorgeous cake, but it's so expensive. But it goes so perfectly with your pink and white theme. Also, we're planning to order 2,000 pink and white roses. And an ice sculpture for the reception area. How much will all this cost? You can't put a price tag on happiness. Daddy will have a heart attack. He's gonna have one anyway. I just saw him eating a block of cheese. Why should that stop you from having the wedding of your dreams? Really? You deserve the best on your big day. Okay, I'm sold. Let me write you a check. When that went bust, we became travel bloggers and influencers. With our huge number of fake followers, we managed to get into the best hotels for free as long as we wrote a review. When I'm rich, I will buy a hotel and live there. They have the best beds. Room service? Yes, we'll have two lobsters, four sushi platters, two beef burgers with fries, the prawn tempura, the fish tempura, okay, anything with the word tempura. And why don't you bring up the entire dessert menu? Thanks. Of course, none of these businesses lasted too long, and we were always on our toes, traveling from place to place, changing disguises, trying not to get caught. The only person who had any idea of our activities was Freddy. But whenever we went back home, he was always happy to see us and never asked questions. Two years had gone by like this, and Mom was finally awake, except she didn't remember being our mom. Now, we had no chance to ask her about the fake IDs and laptop we'd found, because all she seemed to remember was her childhood and freaking in Russia. We showed her pictures of us together, and the doctors explained that she'd lost most of her memory, and they were unsure if she'd regain it. Oh, my girls, I am so sorry I don't remember anything about you, but I feel a connection to you, as strong as the frost on my toes walking barefoot in snow, and as sweet as the smell of my grandmother's honey cakes, and as deep as the violet skies of Siberia, and... Yeah, yeah, we get it, Mom. We love you, too. As the three of us sat in a cafe later, I was still trying to process everything when I saw Meredith had a faraway look on her face. I know that face, Em. What are you planning? Oh, nothing. Just thinking how excited Arthur will be when he finds out Mom is awake. You're talking about our neighbor, Arthur? Yeah, he's been visiting Mom every week for two years. He's always been in love with her. He'll be happy, but she won't even remember him. That actually works in his favor. Mom always found him irritating. What are you saying exactly? What if we convinced Mom that she was deeply in love with Arthur before she went into a coma? I'm sure he won't have any problem playing along. Maybe we even say that they were engaged before she got sick? If we set them up, Mom will be taken care of for life. Arthur is rich with a capital dollar sign. Wow, Meredith, you're a freaking genius. Jeez, why are you girls always scheming? Because our parents are not neurosurgeons. You can't use that excuse forever. Watch me. Like we expected, Arthur immediately agreed, and we got to work. We photoshopped tons of pictures of Mom and him, and soon he even turned up with a giant emerald ring. You chose this Russian emerald ring from an antique shop where I proposed to you. Oh, it is so beautiful. I wish I remembered all of these moments, but I do feel a connection to you, as strong as the smell of lavender on a Russian summer breeze, and as warm as Papa's fur coat, and as comforting as a bowl of kidney pickle soup, and kiss her now. As Arthur and Mom kissed, Meredith and I walked out of the room and burst out <laughs> laughing. We laughed till we almost beat our pants. Oh God, my tummy hurts. <laughs> Are we doing the right thing, fooling Mom? She's no fool. She asked me how rich Arthur is yesterday. Now she feels very connected to him. And within a month, Mom was walking down the aisle in a grand wedding in Arthur's garden. Of course, Meredith and I had made all the arrangements and totally overcharged Arthur. I promise to cherish and to love you forever and follow you to the ends of the earth. We will go to Russia and start our new life there in the lovely house you have bought me as a wedding gift. And yes, I will cherish and love you and whatever, etc., etc. Now you may exchange rings. Did you just hear what I just heard? Are they moving to Russia? That can't happen. Is it too late to object to this wedding? Shh. You guys are ruining the ceremony. What's wrong with you? Are you a moron? You know she can't go to Russia. Why not? She's Russian, isn't she? Oh. 
Oh yeah, she shouldn't go to Russia. Hold it, everyone! Sorry, Mom, but you can't go to Russia. Oh, sweetie, I will take you girls with me, don't worry. We're taking them with us? No, no one's going to Russia. Can we, uh, uh, discuss this later? You're ruining the moment. Arthur, shh! Listen, Mom, we need to talk. As I got up to talk to Mom, I tripped on my dress and crashed into this big cage holding a hundred pigeons, and they all started flying off. This was supposed to be for after the ceremony! But suddenly, those pigeons turned vicious and came back to attack everyone. They clawed at people's hair, poked them with their beaks, and pooped everywhere. As the guests ran around in chaos, someone slammed straight into the wedding cake. Meredith and I grabbed Mom's arms and dragged her home. What is wrong with you two? There's something you need to know, Mom. Meredith and I ended up showing her all her fake passports, IDs, and the laptop, and she was stunned. My name is Alexi, and none of these IDs have that name. Mom, we don't know who you really are or why you left Russia. What if you were a spy or some sort of criminal? What if you're wanted in Russia? If you go back there, you might get arrested or worse. Apparently, many years ago, some bad people were looking for you, and we don't know why. You have to stay here and keep a low profile. But I, I want to find my parents and see my home. It's all I remember. You can't risk it. Not till you get your memory back. Or we get someone to tell us what's on that laptop and figure out who you are. We're sorry. We hugged Mom as she cried, then fixed her makeup and returned to the wedding. The pigeons had left, and the guests were leaving too. Stop, everyone. The wedding isn't over yet. And Arthur, Mom wants to move to Hawaii instead. From the top, people! Arthur was very confused, but they finally got married. Later, as everyone moved towards the dance floor, Freddie asked me to join him. So, now your mom is well and you have a rich stepfather. What are your plans? I like traveling around with Meredith. Maybe I'll do that for some time. There isn't any reason to stay here anyway. Ouch. Why don't you just hit me with an axe? Of course, there's you. I can always come visit. That's not good enough, Claire. <gasps> Look. I have to say this now, I've been in love with you since forever, and let's not pretend you don't know that. Don't you think you can give us a chance? We're best friends, and I'd do anything for you. I know, Freddy, but I just can't. I love you, but not like you want me to. You can try dating me. Maybe you'll feel differently. I don't think I will. And I can give you a good life. You don't need to live like a freaking criminal anymore. Some people might call me an artist. A uh, con artist, yeah. Still a criminal. Maybe I enjoy being one. It's kind of thrilling. I don't really believe that. You don't want to believe that. We're too different, Freddy. You're gonna be a neurosurgeon like your parents. And you'll find a nice girlfriend and then marry her and live in a nice neighborhood and you'll be content. I'm not sure that's the life I want. It sounds boring. I wish I'd said something else when I saw Freddy's hurt face, but there was no easy way to let him down. He kissed me gently on the cheek and walked away, and I felt a lump in my throat. Mom moved to Hawaii with Arthur, and Meredith and I went down a crazy path over the next few years. There wasn't a scam, fraud, or con we didn't attempt. We never stuck to the same thing for too long, in case the police picked up a pattern. But word got around in underground circles about two female con artists, and we actually started getting hired for our services. People were always less likely to suspect two pretty innocent looking girls than someone who looks like a thug. And working with these thugs, we learned how to forge signatures, create counterfeit money, make fake checks, and steal credit card information. I'd always been bad with computers, but Meredith even showed a great knack for hacking. We made good money, partied with rich people, traveled first class, and stayed in amazing hotels. But for me, the glitz and glamour gradually started to fade. I was getting tired living out of suitcases, always wearing disguises, and looking over my shoulder. I had no real friends, and even if I met someone I thought I could like, I knew I couldn't be in a real relationship. I was almost thinking of talking to Meredith about quitting the con artist's life, when one day she burst into our New York hotel room looking beyond excited. You won't believe the job we just got. It's gonna pay us $250,000. Who would pay that kind of money? And for what? Turns out, the kind of people who take you to their headquarters blindfolded. As Meredith and I walked into an underground room, a large chair swiveled around to reveal 